Can you hear me now? I really hope that's the first thing that they hear. Good day, Grand I, I World. Like, are we, we are live. Now? Robert, I can't see the thing. Oh, okay, now I see it. So okay. it, it takes a second. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'm going to mute the string. Okay, great. Perfect. Yeah, I have more, even more oranges to be eating. Hello, hello. Orange, 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 orange. This is exactly what our viewers asked um, for. Knock, knock. Orange eating content. Robert, not. Robert, knock knock. Who's there? Banana. <laughs> Banana who? Knock knock. Who's there? Banana. 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 Banana who? Wait, knock knock. Who's there? <laughs> Orange! Orange who? Oh, Herman, look orm? Yes. <laughs> yes, I can. Great. Now I'm going to have a cough drop because I forgot I was narrating these chapters and I need to prepare my voice. I like I how you didn't even kind of finish the joke. I, I edited it. You made it your own. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's the Lily version of this joke now. Oh my. It says we have four people watching. I know two of those oh. are us. Oh. I don't think I'm watching. Oh, I am watching. Hi, guys. Hi. What's up, people? Say hello in the chat. We're happy to talk to you. Yes, figure out how to use the chat. It can't be that hard. So you click the text box on the right that says, say something. Yeah, see this? Even this sounds like so much work. I can't even get mine to scroll down. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much. You know, this is a time for people to relax, not for them to have to figure out how to use te <laughs> heavy technical tools. People don't need to learn how to type. <laughs> they don't. They don't need to learn how to access it. Oh, now it says two watching. It's really important. We lost our two viewers. <laughs> We don't. Maybe that was us who left. No. Oh, now it says three. Oh, now it's two again. Oh, I don't even know where you. Oh, hi, Sandy. Sandy. Should we not say people's? Uh, should we not say people's names in the in the video? Is that like doxing? I don't think it's doxing if you don't say their last name. Well, okay. What if you say their address though? Uh, is that doxing? Yes. What if you say, like, for example, if you know information about people who are watching, like, you know their FSA health spending um, uh, credit card information, if you say that, would that be doxing? I think that's just identity theft at that point. No, but if I just say it out loud. Yeah, that's um, aiding and abetting do identity that. theft. But isn't that just doxing? <laughs> no. Doxing is revealing like... someone's location to a dangerous individual who means something negative to that person. No, I thought it was just like if you just say someone's information out loud online. Oh, I, I've always understood in the meme sense that it was like uh, you you really don't like someone and so you reveal their personal information to someone who also does not like them who is a danger to them. I thought it was just like the public, like anonymous. I took a class on um, social media. Then you probably know way better than me. 
Well, it was social media and surveillance. I thought it was going to be so fun because I thought it would be mostly about social media, but it was mostly about surveillance. <laughs> um, in case you were wondering, we are going to get to Phantom Toll Booth. We're just waiting for more people, but I do have kind of like um, uh, just kind of like an observation. So we uh, we got an email at work today that said like per CDC requirements, basically everybody has to be wearing masks now. And you know who I think is probably very happy about this? Like that everyone's wearing masks? Who? Yes. Tyra Banks. Because, <laughs> like, never has smiling been more important. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure I understand. What's the deal with Tyra Banks? So, see, this is why I didn't think. <laughs> so, Tyra Banks, she has this whole thing where she's like, you know, America's Next Top Model. Yeah. So it's Tyra Banks who teaches people how to model, and it's a reality show. And her big thing is smizing, which is smiling with your eyes. And she's like, it's like this. This is just smiling. This is smizing, you know? And now everybody's got to be smizing, baby, because we got no mouths anymore. <laughs> and that's Oh, my. <laughs> What happened? So she turned my high school choir director's uh, concept of performance into a model thing. I'm sure that your high school choir director stole it from Tyra Banks. Let's be real. Okay. Yeah. I mean, who do you think stole from who? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going like, to give that an answer. <laughs> Because the answer um, is the choir director would steal from Tyra Banks because <laughs> Tyra Banks does not mm-hmm. know the choir director. <laughs> <laughs> but then what if she did? Then that would be a much more interesting story. I think so, too. Do you have any kind of like opening? Um... Yes. <laughs> um, what kind of skills? Okay. The, um that didn't seem important before seem more important now. We talked about smizing as a skill that's more important now. What do you propose a skill? Um, I would say, I would say the uh, the general skill of uh, just being able to utilize technology for a connection. Mm. So like computer hacking skills. Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly what I meant. <laughs> you hit and the nail on the, the it's head. Like, probably it's like harder to you know how it's harder to find food at the grocery store. So probably I would say another skill that's probably important is like bow hunting skills. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so you can kill the other shoppers before they get your pot roast? And then I would say the other skill that's important would be like self-defense. So like you could just kind of call that nunchuck skills. Mm. So like the skills would be like bow hunting, nunchuck skills, computer hacking skills. How to start a fire. <laughs> um, yeah. How to start a fire using battery acid and a rotisserie chicken. I mean, I think we'll, I think we'll let history decide how the joke I was doing went down. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Sandy's response is going to be brilliant. I think um I think certain people are kind of there for me on that and then I think one person wasn't really there for me for what I was trying to do. And like maybe he knew he wasn't being there for me, but maybe he just didn't know, you know, but knowing that person I would say he just wasn't being there for me. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. So hi, everybody. <laughs> it is now uh, 8.33. Uh, mm-hmm. Good to see a so couple of people in the chat So we have to wait until there. 8.40. We, we do? Thank you for being here early. Uh-huh. Excuse okay, me, but that was not our schedule. <laughs> well, you know how like people say things start at 8.30, but... Everyone's like, it's not going to start. Like, you, Have you ever been to a play, Robert? Yeah, I was about to say, you know, uh, it, it's theater time. Yes, so in theater, does, does, does the show ever start on time? 
No. No. If you're lucky, it starts one minute late. Yeah. But then also, like, for some people, maybe they're late, and then they also have to go to the bathroom, and they know that the house manager will hold house for them. And maybe that's why the show started late. We don't know. Started late. There's no way to tell. Um, let's talk about why we're doing this project. Yes. Why not? I mean, yes, they probably okay. would like to I'm, know. I'm, yeah. Well, I'm drinking my tea now, so I think you. So. <laughs> hi, everyone. Um, I'm Robert H, and this is. If I gesture down there. Lily T. There we go. <laughs> uh, and we are here doing a project called Socially Distanced Reading. Uh, as many of you are aware, most of the world is under a very large quarantine called social distancing right now because of COVID-19. Uh, this involves a lot of just in general not being able to talk to your friends uh, in an up-close environment or in general socialize. Uh, so we have come to the decision that, well, as a result of playing with stuffed animals far too much, uh, that we would like to share some stories and entertainment with y'all. Um, that I would uh, say not too much. I would say a normal amount. Okay, a, a normal, normal amount, amount considering the circumstances, <laughs> and we would like to share their their bounty with all of you. Um, so mm -hmm. we're here today to begin uh, our first book, which is the Phantom Toll Booth. I say first, like there's yes. going to be a second, but that's that's the hope. I mean, anyway, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully we cannot be here, but you know we are taking suggestions. Um, we decided to do a Phantom Toll Booth because it's a literally about a person who's very bored and then gets to go on a magical adventure. And we kind of have half of that in real life. And we're here to bring you the second half. Um, Phantom Tollbooth was written in 1961, I think. <laughs> um, and uh, it's an enduring classic. Um, and we haven't read it in a long time. So we're going to be reading it to you. Um, this week I am narrating, oh, exciting, exciting, um, and then we will be playing certain parts, they're divided, and, um, is there anything else we need to talk about? I don't think so. I, I think we, we yeah, just hop into say, it. Yeah, I would say we're very excited, um, that you're here, so thank you for being here. Um, Okay. The Phantom Tollbooth, as read to you on my Kindle. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Okay. So, Thanks, Lily's parents. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, mm, this show is sponsored by uh, Buffy and Dave. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> Duh. <sighs> what about my eyeballs, you know? Oh, I, do pl I probably should put my glasses on. <laughs> Sorry, I know you that you're used to me being beautiful and glamorous, but now I'm, I'm um, it's like I'm going backward in the movie. I'm just, I have to, you guys, I really thought I was going to be prepared to clean these glasses. I'm actually just nervous about starting, so I'm stalling. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay. So. Um, chapter one, Milo. There once was a boy named Milo who didn't know what to do with himself, not just sometimes, but always. When he was in school, he longed to be out, and when he was out, he longed to be in. On the way, he thought about coming home, and coming home, he wished he were going. Wherever he was, he wished he were somewhere else, and when he got there, he wondered why he bothered. Nothing really interested him, least of all the things that should have. It seems to me that almost everything is a waste of time, 
he remarked one day as he walked dejectedly home from school. I can't see the point in learning to solve useless problems or subtracting turnips from turnips or knowing where Ethiopia is or how to spell February. And, since no one bothered to explain otherwise, he regarded the process of seeking knowledge as the greatest waste of time of all. There's a picture. As he and his unhappy thoughts hurried along, for while he was never anxious to be where he was going, he liked to get there as quickly as possible, it seemed a great wonder that the world, which was so large, could sometimes feel so small and empty. And worst of all... He continued sadly. There's nothing for me to do, nor where I'd care to go, and hardly anything worth seeing. He punctuated this last thought with such a deep sigh that a house sparrow singing nearby stopped and rushed home to be with his family. Without stopping or looking up, Milo dashed past the buildings and the busy shops that lined the street, and in a in a few minutes reached reached home, dashed through the lobby, hopped onto the elevator two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and off again, opened the apartment door, rushed into his room, flopped dejectedly into a chair, and grumbled softly. Another long afternoon. He looked glumly at all the things he owned, the books that were too much trouble to read, the tools he'd never learned to use, the small electric automobile he hadn't driven in months, or was it years, and the hundreds of other games and toys and bats and balls and bits and pieces scattered around him. And then, to one side of the room, just next to the phonograph, he noticed something he had certainly never seen before. Who could possibly have left such an enormous package and such a strange one? For a while, for a while it was not quite square, it was definitely not round, and for its size it was larger than almost any other package of smaller dimension that he'd ever seen. Attached to one side was a bright blue envelope which said simply, For Milo, who has plenty of time. Of course, if you've ever gotten a surprise package, you can imagine how puzzled and excited Milo was, and if you've never gotten one, pay close attention because someday you might. I don't think it's my birthday. He puzzled. And Christmas must be months away, and I haven't been outstandingly good, or even good at all. He had to admit this even to himself. Most probably I won't like it anyway, but since I don't know where it came from... I can't possibly send it back. He thought about it for quite a while and then opened the envelope just to be but just to be polite. One genuine turnpike toll booth, it stated, and then went on easily assembled at home and for use by those who have never traveled in lands beyond. Beyond what? thought Milo as he continued to read. This package contains the following items. One, one, genuine turnpike toll booth to be used to be erected according to directions. Three, three, precautionary signs to be used in a precautionary fashion. Assorted coins for use in paying tolls. One, one, map up to date and carefully drawn by master cartographers depicting natural and man-made features. One, one, book of rules and traffic regulations, which may not be bent or broken. And in smaller letters at the bottom, it concluded, results are not guaranteed, but if not perfectly satisfied, your wasted time will be refunded. Following the instructions, which told him to cut here, lift here, and fold back all around, he soon had the toll booth unpacked and set up on its stand. He fitted the windows in place and attached the roof, which extended out on both sides, and fastened on the coin box. It was very much like the toll booth he'd seen on family trips, except, of course, it was much smaller and purple. What a strange present, he thought to himself. The least they could have done was to send a highway with it, for it's terribly impractical without one. But since, at the time, there was nothing else he wanted to play with, he set up the three signs. Slow down. Approaching toll booth. Please have your fare ready. Have your destination in mind. 
and slowly unfolded the map. As the announcement stated, it was a beautiful map in many colors, showing principal roads, rivers and seas, towns and cities, mountains and valleys, intersections and detours, and sites of outstanding interest, both beautiful and historic. The only trouble was that Milo had never heard of any of the places it indicated, and even the names sounded most peculiar. I don't think there really is such a country. He concluded after studying it carefully. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. And he closed his eyes and poked a finger at the map. Dictionopolis. Milo read slowly when he saw what his finger had chosen. Oh, well, I might as well go there as anywhere. He walked across the room and dusted off the, the car off carefully. Then, taking the map and rule book with him, he hopped in and, for lack of anything better to do, drove slowly up to the toll booth. As he deposited his coin and rolled past, he remarked wistfully, I do hope this is an interesting game. Otherwise, the afternoon will be so terribly dull. Chapter 2! Oh, we made it! Beyond Expectations Suddenly, he found himself speeding along an unfamiliar country highway, and as he looked back over his shoulder, neither the toll booth nor his room, were, or nor even the house, was anywhere in sight. What had happened as a make believe, what had started as make believe, was now very real. What a strange thing to have happen! He thought, just as you might be thinking right now. This game is much more serious than I thought. For here I am riding on a road I've never seen, going to a place I've never heard of, and all because of a toll booth which came from nowhere. I'm certainly glad that it's a nice day for a trip. He concluded hopefully, for at the moment this was the one thing he definitely knew. The sun sparkled, the sky was clear, and all the colors he saw seemed to be richer and brighter than he could ever remember. The flowers shone as if they'd been cleaned and polished, and the tall trees that lined the road shimmered in silvery green. Oh. Welcome to Expectations, said a carefully lettered sign on a small house at the side of the road. Information, predictions, and advice cheerfully offered. Park here and blow horn. At the first sound from the horn, like, toot, toot. That's a train. Whatever. At the first sound from the horn, a little man in a long coat came rushing from the house, speaking as fast as he could and repeating everything <clears throat> several times. <gasps> my, 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 my. My, my, my. Welcome, 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 welcome to the land of expectations, to the land of expectations, to the land of expectations. We don't get many travelers these days. We certainly don't get many travelers these days. Now, what can I do for you? I'm the weatherman. Is this the right road for Dictionopolis? Asked Milo, a little bowled over by the effusive greeting. Well now, well now, well now, he began again. I don't know of any wrong road to Dictionopolis, so if this road goes to Dictionopolis at all, it must be the right road, and if it doesn't, it must be the right road to somewhere else because there are no wrong roads to anywhere. Do you think it will rain? I, I thought you were the weatherman. Said Milo, very confused. Oh, no, said the little man. I'm the weatherman, not the weatherman. For after all, it's more important to know whether there will be weather than what the weather will be. And with that, he released a dozen balloons that sailed off into the sky. Let's see which way the wind is blowing, he said, chuckling over his little joke and watching them disappear in all directions. What kind of a place is Expectations? inquired Milo, unable to see the humor and feeling very doubtful of the little man's sanity. <sighs> good question, good question, good question, he exclaimed. Expectations is the place you must always go to before you get to where you're going. Of course, some people never go beyond expectations, but my job is to hurry them along whether they like it or not. Now what else can I do for you? And before Milo could reply, he rushed into the house and reappeared a moment later with a new coat and an umbrella. I think I can find my own way, said Milo, not at all sure that he could. But since he didn't understand the little man at all, he decided that he might as well move on. 
at least until he met someone whose sentences didn't always sound as if they would make as much sense backwards as forwards. Splendid, splendid, splendid! exclaimed the weatherman. Whether or not you find your own way, you're bound to find some way. If you happen to find my way, please return it as it was lost years ago. I imagine by now it's quite rusty. You did say it was going to rain, didn't you? And with that, he nerve he opened the umbrella and looked up nervously. I'm glad you made your own decision. I do so hate to make up my mind about anything, whether it's good or bad, up or down, in or out, rain or shine. Expect everything, I always say, and the unexpected never happens. Now please drive carefully. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. His last goodbye was drowned out by an enormous clap of thunder. And as Milo drove down the road in the bright sunshine, he could see the weatherman standing in the middle of a fierce cloudburst that seemed to be raining only on him. The road now dipped into a broad green valley and stretched toward the horizon. The little car moved along with very little effort, and Milo had hardly to touch the accelerator to go as fast as he wanted. He was glad to be on his way again. It's all very well to spend time in expectations, he thought. But talking to that strange man all day would certainly get me nowhere. He's the most peculiar person I've ever met. Continued Milo, unaware of how many peculiar people he would shortly encounter. As he drove along the peaceful highway, he soon fell to daydreaming and paid less and less attention to where he was going. In a short time, he wasn't paying any attention at all. And that is why, at a fork in the road, when a sign pointed to the left, Milo went to the right, along a route that looked suspiciously like the wrong way. Things began to change as he left the main highway. The sky became quite gray, and along with it, the whole countryside seemed to lose its color and assume the same monotonous tone. Everything was quiet, and even the air hung heavily. The, the birds sang only gray songs, and the road wound back and forth in an endless series of climbing curves. Mile after mile after mile after mile he drove, and now, gradually, the car went slower and slower until it was hardly moving at all. It looks as though I'm getting nowhere. Beyond Milo, becoming very drowsy and dull. I hope I haven't taken a wrong turn. Mile after after mile after mile after mile and everything became grayer and more monotonous finally the car just stopped altogether and as hard as he tried it wouldn't budge another inch i wonder where i am said Milo in a very worried tone. You're in the doldrums, wailed a voice that sounded far away. He looked around quickly to see who had spoken. No one was there, and it was as quiet and still as one could imagine. Yes, the doldrums. Yawned another voice, but still he saw no one. What are the doldrums? He cried loudly and tried very hard to see who would answer this time. The doldrums, my young friend, are where nothing ever happens and nothing ever changes. This time the voice came from so close that Milo jumped with surprise, for sitting on his right shoulder so lightly that he hardly noticed was a small creature exactly the color of his shirt. Allow me to introduce all of us. The creature went on. We are the Lethargians at your service. Milo looked around and for the first time noticed dozens of them sitting on the car, standing on the road, and lying all over the trees and bushes. They were very difficult to see because whatever happened to be sitting on or near, wait, because they, because whatever they happened to be sitting on or near was exactly the color they happened to be. Talk about a garden path. 
Each one of these looked very much like the other, except for the color, of course, and some looked even more like each other than they did like themselves. I'm very pleased to meet you, said Milo, not sure whether or not he was pleased at all. I think I'm lost. Can you help me, please? Don't say think, said one sitting on his shoe, for the one on his shoulder had fallen asleep. It's against the law. And he yawned and fell off to sleep, too. No one's allowed to think in the doldrums, continued a third, beginning to doze off. And as each one spoke, he fell off to sleep, and another picked up the conversation with hardly any interruption. Don't you have a rule book? It's Local Ordinance 175389-J. Milo quickly pulled the rule book from his pocket, opened to the page, and read... Ordinance 175389-J. It shall be unlawful, illegal, and unethical to think, think of thinking, surmise, presume, reason, meditate, or speculate while in the doldrums? Anyone breaking this law shall be severely punished. That's a ridiculous law said Milo quite indignantly. Everybody thinks. We don't, shouted the Lethargians all at once. And most of the time, you don't, said a yellow one sitting on a daffodil. That's why you're here. You weren't thinking, and you weren't paying attention either. People who don't pay attention often get stuck in the doldrums. And with that, he toppled out of the flower and smelt, and fell snoring into the grass. Milo couldn't help laughing at the little creature's strange behavior, even though he knew it might be rude. Stop that at once, ordered the plaid when clinging to his stocking. Laughing is against the law. Don't you have a rule book? It's Local Ordinance 574381-W. Opening the book again, Milo found Ordinance 574381-W. In the doldrums, laughter is frowned upon and smiling is permitted only on alternate Thursdays. Violators shall be dealt with most harshly. Well, if you can't laugh or think, what can you do? Asked Milo. Anything, as long as it's nothing, and everything, as long as it's anything. Explained another. There's lots to do. We have a very busy schedule. At eight o'clock, we get up, and then we spend from eight to nine daydreaming. From nine to nine-thirty, we take our early mid-morning nap. From nine-thirty to ten-thirty, we dawdle and delay. From 10.30 to 11.30, we take our late early morning nap. <clears throat> From 11.30 to 12, we hide, bide our time, and then eat lunch. From 1 to 2, we linger and loiter. From 2 to 2.30, we take our early afternoon nap. From 2.30 to 3.30, we put off for tomorrow what we could have done today. From 3.30 to 4, we take our early late afternoon nap. From 4 to 5, we loaf and lounge until dinner. From 6 to 7, we dilly-dally. From 7 to 8, we take our early evening nap. 
And then for an hour before we go to bed at nine, we waste time. As you can see, that leaves almost no time for brooding, lagging, plotting, or procrastinating. And if we stop to think or laugh, we'd never get nothing done. You mean you'd never get anything done? Corrected Milo. We don't want to get anything done. Snapped another angrily. We want to get nothing done, and we can do that without your help. You see, continued another in a more conciliatory tone, it's really quite strenuous doing nothing all day, so once a week we take a holiday and go nowhere, which was just where we were going when you came along. Would you care to join us? I might as well, thought Milo. That's where I seem to be going anyway. Tell me. He yawned, for he had felt ready to take a nap or a nap now himself. Does everyone here do nothing? Everyone but the terrible watchdog, said two of them, shuddering in a chorus. He's always sniffing around to see that nobody wastes time. A most unpleasant character. The watchdog? Said Milo quizzically. The watchdog! Shouted another, fainting from fright, for racing down the road, barking furiously and kicking up a great cloud of dust, was the very dog of whom they had been speaking. Run! Wake up! Run! Here he comes! The watchdog! <laughs> Great shouts filled the air as the lethargy and scattered in all directions and soon disappeared entirely. <laughs> exclaimed the watchdog as he dashed up to the car, loudly puffing and panting. Milo's eyes opened wide, for there in front of him was a large dog with a perfectly normal head, four feet, a tail, and the body of a loudly ticking alarm clock. What are you doing here? growled the watchdog. Just killing time? <sighs> Said, replied Milo apologetically. Y you see, uh... Killing time? Roared the dog so furiously that his alarm went off. It's bad enough wasting time without killing it. And he shuddered at the thought. Why are you in the doldrums anyway? Don't you have anywhere to go? I was on my way to Dictionopolis when I got stuck here. Explained Milo. Can you help me? Help you? You must help yourself, Dog replied, carefully winding himself up with his left hind leg. I suppose you know why you got stuck? I guess I just wasn't thinking, said Milo. Precisely! shouted the dog as his alarm went off again. Now you know what you must do. I'm afraid I don't. <sighs> admitted Milo, feeling quite stupid. Well, continued the, the watchdog impatiently, since you got here by not thinking, it seems reasonable to expect that in order to get out, you must start thinking. And with that, he hopped into the car. Do you mind if I get in? I love automobile rides. Milo began to think as hard as he could, which was very difficult because he wasn't used to it. He thought of birds that swim and fish that fly. He thought of yesterday's lunch and tomorrow's dinner. He thought of words that begin with J and numbers that end in three. And as he thought, the wheels began to turn. We're moving! We're moving! He shouted happily. Quick thinking! scolded the watchdog. The little car started to go faster and faster as Milo's brain whirled in activity, and down the road they went. In a few moments, they were out of the doldrums and back on the main highway. All the colors had returned to their original brightness, and as they raced along the road, Milo continued to think of all sorts of things, of the many detours and wrong turns that were so easy to take, of how fine it was to be moving along, and most of all, of how much could actually be accomplished with just a little thought. And the dog, his nose in the wind, just sat back, watchfully ticking. So that's the end of the chapter, 
guys. Um, and you would think, um, so normally we're just going to do two chapters, uh, but I actually do have a, um, we have a surprise guest coming, um, who's just going to kind of like give us some words of encouragement. Uh, and it, he's, he's here now. Um, let me just, you know, get him set up. Oh, uh, hey guys. Yeah, it's me, Milo. Milo Ventimiglia. Uh, not many people know this, but I was actually, um, I was actually the basis for the character of Milo in Phantom Tollbooth. Uh, Norton Juster, like, you know, he knew me really well and he thought, this is a guy who uh, I could write a book about. And so I just wanted to say, I think it's really great what you're doing uh, because a lot of people are bored right now. And what we really need are like just the arts to help us bring us together. Yeah. Um, yeah, Robert, how are you feeling about uh, that chapter that you just read? Wow, I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling pumped now that you're here, Milo. I mean, those lethargians had me feeling a little down for a little bit, but I mean, it's really great to meet you, sir. Oh yeah, you know I just love interacting with the fans. Uh, I know you love Gilmore Girls. I know it's really important to you. Um, and we just I just want to say hi to everybody watching. You know I love you. Milo loves you. Me, Milo. Me, Milo Ventimiglia. I love you. Yeah, I'm just like. You know, so happy to be here in California. We're really pulling it together, you know, really leading the way in social distancing. Yeah, we we've been on the on the bandwagon for a while. So Milo, how how uh how have things been going for you with social distancing in general? Oh yeah, they've been going pretty well. You know, I miss you know, my favorite place to be is is the set, right? And of mm. course we can't be in the set right now. So I'm just trying to um you know, figure out where things went wrong with Rory, trying to get back together with her. Oh, Milo, no, Milo, you good. gotta, you gotta calm down on that tree that you've been barking up. I mean, she, she's, she's not for you anymore these days, my buddy. You, you gotta, know, I, I don't know. You All gotta just time... give it a break. There, there are more people out there, Milo. Oh, I don't know. I guess. It's just hard because when you're alone, you just go back to like the last relationship that you had that was really working for you. Yeah, but I, you're probably right. Rory's Milo, probably not for me. Milo, that relationship was really working for you. Come on now. <laughs> oh, Robert, I came here just to give you some words of encouragement. Um, it's really all I have to say. Do you have any Well, you got a about... bit more than you bargained for, didn't you? Yeah, well, I guess <laughs> I guess I did, you know. Sometimes you just have to have someone tell you that your dreams are nightmares. And uh that's just that's the message I needed to hear today. Um so anyway, me Milo Ventimiglia, the basis for the character of Milo. I'm actually um yeah, so I just can't wait to be back with my time traveling family on NBC. So, yeah. Well, you have a great time with that, Milo, and uh, hey. stay safe out there. Yeah, I will. You too. Be well. Namaste. Namaste. Cool. Yeah, namaste, Milo. Thanks for those words of encouragement. Yeah. What a guy that Milo. Yeah, really nice of him to come be on the on the show. Um, yeah. Do we have anything? I just want to say thank you for coming. Um. Yeah, I guess we'll be back on on Sunday at 8.30, same time. Yeah, we'll be um, back on yeah. this Sunday, which is April 12th, 12th at 8.30 p.m. PST. Uh, make sure you guys uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more of this. And uh, go ahead and hit that uh, little notification bell next to the subscribe button. Uh, and that'll send you a notification every single time that we go live or post a new video. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Namaste. Namaste. Bye, and Milo. <laughs>